thank you for joining our session today. I'm Julia King, a contributing editor at CIO. And today I am so pleased to have Brad Stone, CIO at Booz Allen Hamilton with us. Hi, Brad. Hey, Julia, how are you doing? Good, thanks for joining us. It's great to see you. Great to see you. Great. Well, I'm just going to dive right in here and and start with uh, a question that I think um, will set the stage for us. But um, in, in keeping with the theme of today's summit, which is leading in disruptive times, maybe it's best to start by asking you to give us a, a brief snapshot of how events of the past two years or so have worked to disrupt business as usual at Booz Allen. I would imagine that as a service provider, your, your company has been impacted not only by disruptions internal to, to Booz Allen Hamilton, but, but also by disruptions impacting the various industries you serve. Yeah, it's a great way to start off. Um, the pandemic has really challenged all of us, but ultimately provided a lot of opportunities to rethink why we do things and how we do them. You mentioned, Julia, we are a professional services organization at our core, have been around for over 100 years. And a big part of that has been trusted relationships. And trusted relationships really come down to personal relationships. And the pandemic has challenged that because we were a culture that wanted to shake hands, hug somebody, and really let them know in person how we connected with them. And the disruption over the past couple of years has made us have to change that. We've had to really embrace technology, not only as an enabler, but ultimately the foundation by which we build those trusted relationships. Um, it's challenged each one of us. It's challenged our different clients, military, government, and commercial organizations, but it's really challenged our people. You know, fortunately, our people are unbelievably resilient, and they respond to these types of challenges with a can-do attitude and flexibility. Um, the other part of it, too, is to have a core infrastructure team that can respond to things. And we're really fortunate, and as a CIO, to have a pretty amazing team that adjusted fast. But now as we come out of the pandemic, that disruption has to lead towards simplification and driving towards how do we balance what we had in the past, that personal relationship that was really a kind of a touch relationship with now a remote hybrid where any of our over 30,000 employees are around the globe so that it meets what they need because there's no CIO out there in the industry that knows what every single employee needs. And the key is to simplify that down so that we are able to end up giving them something that they can connect with their fellow employees, with our clients, and really with their communities. Well, it's interesting when you talk about streamlining or simplifying, is this simplifying technology that perhaps you needed to put in place uh, to be able to continue operations during the pandemic, or are you rethinking the whole infrastructure as you emerge into a new working environment? Yeah, so, so simplification has taken a few different forms. At its easiest level, you know, all of us immediately adjusted to say, wow, we're jumping on Zoom, we're jumping on Teams, we're jumping on WebEx, different amazing communications platforms. And as any large organization, you find that yourself having many of them. So which ones are the ones that make the most sense for your organization? And so for us, that's been a, a challenge of standardizing what those are. Again, you can't provide something that's gonna meet all 30,000 folks, but if you're able to identify some archetypes across your organization and look for the greatest good and then handle those exception cases as what we deem specialized services, it's allowing us to continue to provide you know, foundational services that are really important to that connection that I talked about earlier. But also there's not a single CIO that's their budgets are increasing. And so the reality is you need to be efficient on this and you need to get more for your dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned during our background conversation that Booz Allen Hamilton needed and, and has succeeded in uh, changing the way we think, I think is the way that you put it. And, and before we get into to what that means from an operations and, and services perspective, um, can you talk a little about what it's meant from a leadership perspective? How did you as the company's, um, one of the company's top technology leaders need to change your thinking and, and about innovation and, and about productivity in particular? Yeah, we've all been challenged by, by the past many years. And I think any CIO and any technology leader has been 
really kind of marked by their agility and their capacity to, to learn new things, to take informed risks. And I think the pandemic has only accentuated those characteristics as a leader. Um, your ability to adjust to unplanned events and the capacity to handle um, different demands uh, has only been magnified through this. But I think one of the things that I've noticed back to the concept of simplicity is your need as a leader to simplify things down, whether that's with your stakeholders and customers that are leveraging your services, or most importantly, with your staff. Simplifying it down to them of how what we do empowers our business. We're fortunate as a company to be challenged by our clients to solve some really hard, complex problems. And running an institution like Booz Allen's IT and cybersecurity is an amazing mission. So if I can simplify things down for our set of leaders and then empower them in a kind of a culture of accountability, but then back to that word empowerment, it helps me attract folks. It helps me inspire folks, even if I'm in a rectangular box like I'm in with you today. You know, and it really makes you feel like you're part of the greater good. Um, and I think that's a big reason why a lot of our folks join a company like Booz Allen is it provides great opportunities, but there's almost a calling of doing something, you know, for your nation, for your community, for the globe. And, and, and by leading that way, maintaining that agility, maintaining that capacity, but really simplifying it down can be inspiring, hopefully to our staff and all of our employees. Well, I always find that um, anecdotes go a long way towards really painting the picture. Can you give us a few examples of, you know, perhaps before and after ways that you've simplified dealing with your staff or uh, changes in your strategy, things that you've done to uh, react more agilely as a leader? Being part of a large organization, you have lots of different demands. Users want different technology. Leaders want new tools. They want new access to data. Um, for us as an organization, we simplified ourselves around five organizational principles that allowed us to simplify down to what was the most important for our organization. Um, within those five, it starts at the top with operational excellence. We focus on that all the time. And it's not only just about saying it, it's really about living it. So we actually, I grew up doing a lot of work in the Department of Defense we do monthly stand-ups. We don't require all of our folks to stand up like I used to in operation centers as I was growing up, but we walk through with an accountability of what's the metrics, how are we doing? And in particular, we celebrate when we overcome some of our hardships. And one of the things that we celebrate the most is when we can decommission something. Um, I love to clean up stuff and we celebrate when we're able to turn off a service because in our mind, when we're turning off a service to simplify it, we're making the other services we provide even better. You're Mario Conduing uh, IT there. You're streamlining. I love that idea. <laughs> well, well, coming out of the pandemic, CIOs like yourself, you seem to be placing a greater emphasis on, on innovation by re-engineering IT cultures for sustained creativity and, and expanding on breakthrough pandemic solutions. Well, what does that look like at, at Booz Allen? Did you have solutions that you're now expanding on or refining post-pandemic or hopefully post-pandemic as we're in a different phase, I'll put it that way. Yeah, um, I was really fortunate. I've, I've been in the role a little over a year as, as CIO, but been at Booz Allen for over 25 years in the, in the role before this, I was actually in our innovation group, leading a lot of our enterprise cybersecurity and IT innovation. So I knew what products Booz Allen was building and services for some of our amazing clients. So one of the first things that I did as a CIO was make ourselves what we call client zero. We leverage our solutions that we work with our clients internally whether that's a next generation data lake that allows us to really make data driven kind of decisions, and not just kind of the in intuition that has dominated large corporate cultures like ours for years. In addition to that, looking at, you know, driving a lot of innovation around our kind of DevOps processes 
and not just DevOps, but DevSecOps in terms of pipelining things. Because in the nature of professional services, we're constantly spinning up and spinning down new environments, consuming new data for our you know, amazing artificial intelligence experts to solve from healthcare missions to national security missions. They need an agile set of infrastructure that's able to support that. And so we're able to adopt that ourselves internally as client zero. One, it saves us money. Two, it gives a feedback loop where we're able to actually rotate staff between our client delivery side of our business and our internal of the business. And I'm proof of that that myself, as somebody that spent so many years doing client delivery and now enjoying a corporate role. Well, you had mentioned Operation Excellence as one of those five key principles uh, that are cornerstones of your strategy. What are the other four? Yep. So the next one is having a resilient enterprise that is risk informed. Um, And so we have to recognize that things are going to go bad and it's about our ability to recover those. We also have a third one that ties back immediately to your innovation question. We need to provide innovative services and solutions to our users. The reality is, if you don't, folks will go find it for themselves and run it in your shadows. The fourth one is just what I mentioned about being a data-driven organization. Um, We need to make sure that we have a single source of truth across organizations. We have multiple platforms to run our business and to perform that. And we need to not only have that central source of truth, but it needs to be future-proofed to scale with our organization. And the last one, and they're not exactly in a priority order, is we want to attract staff. We're lucky and fortunate at Booz Allen to attract and retain some of the best in the industry. And I have the privilege of leading a pretty amazing team. And so we've set the goal of being a premier organization within Booz Allen for IT and cybersecurity professionals. And what we do across all five of those, Julia, we hold ourselves accountable back to those stand-ups. We drive metrics against them. We define critical success factors. And again, we celebrate it. And then we gang tackle the areas we need to improve. Well, you mentioned that you've been in the CIO role just uh, a little over a year now. And you had also mentioned during our our previous conversation that when you came to the role that you completely reorganized IT uh, in the last year or so. And what was your objective in doing so? Can you tell us a little bit about that and how also that ties to your goal of attracting and retaining the, the top talent that you require? Yeah, it was interesting joining um, this team and becoming the CIO at an organization that you know well, because the first thing you recognize is what you thought you knew, you still have a lot always to learn. Um, but what I did see as an organization which had tremendous talent a driven towards mission and service delivery, um, but often fractured, not fully integrated to a, a central a set of outcomes, um, and at times driven by different corporate priorities. They were all important, but not seamless against an integrated outcome. So often I would say, unfortunately, we have great parts, but our sum isn't greater than our parts. So the organization, we reset it to kind of focus up back to what I said earlier on that DevSecOps kind of life cycle and organizationally aligned, driven primarily to improve accountability back to the metrics and the outcomes, but also transparency. Many folks just thought, oh, well, that's just the IT shop. They just do a lot of stuff, I'm not sure. And what we did with that is we defined a clearly set service catalog against an idle framework. That allowed us then to drive kind of an empowerment word again. We're able to set portfolio leads around the capabilities that we develop for our business and users and projects. The security team that kind of stitches it all together for that resiliency. And then our underlying IT infrastructure team that operates and defends a complex network. What that enabled us to do is to get more of a centralized purpose towards trying to accelerate growth and enable business success. And so we've been really successful and I've enjoyed every moment of it. It is different being in an operations role 24 by seven. I embrace it Um, and the team that I have, I can't say enough great things about them, but it's a challenge um, every day. But I think we're getting better value out of what we're doing 
And that ties back to that idea of attracting staff. When you provide them opportunities, many of our services were treating like product owners and we're giving them the empowerment to say, run your product, work with your stakeholders, work with your customers, work with your users on those systems and build the best that you can within a framework. That really inspires talent to end up having a little bit of autonomy or ownership within it, but then still being part of something integrated for the greater good. Because ties back earlier, we attract folks that want to come to Booz Allen because they want to be part of something bigger and, and help. You know, our, our vision statement is empower people to change the world. I often think of that all the time at a micro level. You change the world one individual at a time. And, and the way that we've organized it, I, I feel like a year in, I've definitely seen that kind of cultural feel. It's also a view of just excitement. This is a hard job, but a fun job. And as we've come out of this pandemic and we're in the next phase of it, and maybe we'll always be in the next phase of the next phase, it's being excited to be about part of something. And, and, and I think that's really something tying back to leadership earlier. If you bring excitement, you provide an opportunity for staff, structure and accountability. In the end, you'll attract and retain more folks than you end up losing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're, we're talking about disruption and leadership strategies and disruptive times. And of course, disruption reverberates across all segments of the business. As CIO, you're, you're tightly integrated with all of them. Can you share with us some of your ideas on the best techniques for communication and collaboration across these different segments? And here I'm talking about internal stakeholders, partners, and, and your customers. Yeah, it, it's really important first to think of some commonality in your communication, but also differences. So when we think about things, we have our corporate stakeholders as part of our enterprise organization. You know, we're in partnership with them to run the institution and to provide that kind of corporate backbone to attract and retain staff, to do all of our financial activities we need to do, all of our security, legal, contracts, you name it. And so being able to set a communication mechanism with them around treating them as not only stakeholders, but partners and providing a common corporate experience for folks. But as a professional services, we have a wide range of clients from our military to government to commercial clients that have different security needs, data protection, approaches to different parts. So then that's where you start getting into what I talked about earlier. While we have a set of standard offerings for our users, we also communicate to our different sectors a set of specialized needs. What does a software developer working in our national security business need in terms of tooling? We communicate and offer different things to them than somebody that's working for a commercial organization. And so while we are able to kind of almost create micro level messages to them, it does tie back to some macro level organizational pieces, but it's always a back and forth. And, and we have some of our best technologists delivering to our clients. And what you find when you communicate with them too, is some of your best innovation ideas that then we feed right back into our client zero concept. They're like, hey, wow, that's working for this client. Let's see if we can run that in our fusion center next week because we'll probably get value out of it too. So it creates that kind of virtuous life cycle of things. Um, and, and also even really ties back to us attracting staff because they feel a little bit closer to our mission. Well, finally, I have one last question and I'll, I'll ask for just a tweet size answer here. Um, what's the greatest um, leadership quality that you feel you'll need to rely on going forward, say into the next year? I think humility, back to my comment earlier, you always have so much more to learn. And you're also fortunate to be surrounded by amazing people that challenge you, inspire you, and support you. Great guidance. Well, Brad, thank you so much. I really appreciate being able to talk with you today. It was a terrific interview. Thanks so much, Julia.